And another opportunity. Uh, it's a pleasure to have Mr. Leon Petrov here today. Yay! <laughs> Uh, Jason, sorry. That's, Jason, uh, we can ask that. Yeah. yeah, with Jason. Jason is near um, another two, two years already now. Great. He'll now understand my accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, if, if there's anything you don't understand, raise your hand. But, but I asked Mr. Petrov to come in and speak to us today about a number of things. But one of them that I thought was somewhat urgent was just basic instrument Prepare. How do you take care of your, how do you keep yourself, your instrument, sorry Leon, out of the shop? How do you keep it from going to the shop? And uh, bridges that look like this. You know. And then I believe he's going to speak a bit more about what makes a good sound, the schools of making and... Yeah, yeah, what's the difference so. between sound, uh, um, different type of sound like, like that, because uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, uh, look Leon, are you looking for mellow sound? And for me, it's disaster. What's the mellow sound? That's my English. It's not enough to understand it because it's so general thing. The mellow sound. Uh, it's very difficult to, to to know. It's for me more technically low frequency sound or high frequency sound. That's that's oh, sorry. Yeah, please go okay. Ahead. That, first, what sure, I sure. want to uh, uh, tell thank you for Kurt Thompson to invite me here. That's my normally my life is that time I do the presentation like this or some small lecture, particularly very hard for me with my uh, English language because it's fourth language for me. And it's mostly, yeah, well, mostly the Slavic languages, that's my language, the Russians and uh, um, a little bit about me, someone know about me, someone not. Uh, that's, I'm born in uh, 1958, I'm a very old man. Uh, 50, uh, 55 years old now, and from that 55 or 30 years, I'm, uh, um, I'm working in like violin maker. Uh, enemy of any musical instruments like violins, violas, cellos, double bass, whatever, it's humidity. That's humidity. So uh, I bring here a particular uh, quite from my collection, quite a good, interesting thing, uh, which is I will show you later. That's. Uh, um, Italian ones, one, one of my instruments, what I made, and a few quite old um, um, Austrian ones. That's no Italy, Tyrolean one. People doesn't like it clean the violin. And all dust, rust, uh, dust, and that all stuff come in to the varnish. If you have valuable instrument and uh, moisture, Moisture, again, a big element the moisture. Moisture come in and your rosin stuck into the varnish and go into the varnish, particularly if this varnish is not oil or spirit. Particular all good quality instruments that spirit varnish. Now it's uh, because now we have UV boxes and that's very easy to go to the box and uh, keep it uh, two weeks in the box and varnish is dry, it's enough. It's Nice, beautiful looking instruments. That's a different story. That's you, you, you can be lazy then. But in general uh, position, in the oil, uh, spirit wire, niche like these ones, that's all spirit varnish. You need it to every day uh, after playing the whoop up the, the take off the rosin from there. Uh, you can buy some cleaner. Never use, please, uh, to violin the oily cleaner. Because if you have some breaks inside, a break or cracks or something, any, anything, inside that's oil coming into. And after that, very difficult to glue that, uh, that cracks. Uh, sometimes people uh, don't worry about the cracks and cracks, uh, uh, cracks uh, come in with dust and impossible to between, particularly between uh, belly and right position when you play this position on the body when you keep it, that's the respiration and everything coming into. And if that's happened too long, too long, that's how one year, two year, three years, so the, you don't brew it, that's all dust, everything coming into the ribs. And after that we needed to change the ribs. Because it's impossible to glue. We glue, I have some from Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, the same problem. They uh, bring it and we needed to change the ribs because uh, uh, moisture come in too much with dust, um, with dirty use, with respiration, with that, and that's it. And big restoration. That's good for me. <laughs> uh, uh, mostly the spruce on the top, and all uh, is from maple. 
Why spruce? Spruce have structure of uh, good vibration. Uh, hard timber very very difficult to vibrate. Hard timber and spruce uh, it's that like hard that's pumping um, from strings for vibration of strings pumping um, the air inside through sound post and bridge. That's top nut. That's bottom nut. Where is where stay the tower piece? Okay. Uh, I'll return back because I forgot that sometimes buzzing, if you see buzzing straight away, have a look at the, um, uh, the chin rest. Uh, because chin rest sometimes touching the towel piece and that's it. And you, uh, you try and come in to make and make a looking around and, uh, and kind of sometimes can't no uh, find nothing. Okay. Uh, main things, which is any Stradivari, any Guarneria doesn't sound in good. That's bridge and sound post. That's a very, very important part of violin, which is uh, uh, not glued, just fixing it underneath, very exact fitting to the, uh, to the top. And uh, that part uh, provides uh, vibration from the strings through, through the sound post. Could you show me sound post? So sound post. Somebody know the stick inside of violins? Yeah, that's called the sound post. You know, everybody probably will know about that. Uh, the, and that stick, that small thing is sticks. Uh, that's main in Varni. Because if not this stick, it not this good quality timber, which is provide good vibration through the uh, body, through the bridge to the, this stick, and transform that to the back, and back like mortar start to push in, ah, and base bar. Unfortunately, I don't bring the, uh, the piece of timber gluing with tension to the top, and this base bar uh, give the, uh, to the top um, very tense, um, uh, tense, uh, vib uh, 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 tense, and when uh, when you start to play, you start to play a string, string vibrate to the bridge, bridge go through this sound post and effect of um, uh, bass bar, uh, pushing air to the back, and back pushing air uh, uh, from the violin through this air holes and coming out, coming out. Particular quality of violin, depending on um, how that violin may start a lecture, everybody uh, talk about the mellow sound. And uh, here, particularly in Australia, the um, understanding mellow sound, the low frequency sound, uh, which is in violin doesn't work um, in big halls. That's more chamber music instruments, which is uh, uh, low, nice, more viola, viola sounding instruments. The maker uh, have to find the form. A form uh, we lucky we had Stradivari Guarneri, which is spent all his 90 years for researching or 70 or 80 years to researching the, uh, the best sound. We are now just copying that what they was done in 1700s and till 1737 probably his died. And um, uh, these two makers uh, reduce uh, the, because it's Brescia, Brescia the sort of town, uh, North Italy like in Cremona, but Cremona in second, um, they produce more full big form, the full form, that's uh, fatty form, uh, which is sound is, uh, was quite loud, quite nice, but not uh, flexible enough. Uh, what is good violin? Good violin in that has all spectrum of um, a different frequency that maker has to do that frequency because plates, uh, bottom plate, that has probably around five, maximum four and a half, five, five and a half. Uh, and Guarneri um, uh, did six mil. That's in his uh, famous canon. It's very thick. It's very difficult to play on this violin, but very nice, scary sound from big holes, uh, hole, and like that. Violin has to be flexible. Uh, with big range of the good violin, with big range of dynamics from two pianos to triple forte, and you can push it, and that sound coming up. And imagine one small box of instrument, like violin, have to cover the all 
orchestra which violin player play with orchestra. It's like how scandalous come in. That's one violin and covering that's uh, or sitting over the orchestra. That's not loudness. You can't be louder than uh, than another uh, trumpets and that whole stuff. That's different range of frequency of concept quality instruments coming up and sitting over the orchestra. Orchestra on a lower level of frequencies uh, sit. And the, what's the difference? There's difference between concept quality instruments and just normal instruments, what we play and what we make and whatever. Okay, uh, here I bring from my collection quite good Italian instruments and uh, two instruments from uh, from um, uh, the 1644 that attributed to Steiner. If you want to see the Steiner but scroll, it's made by Al Alban or Albani. That's two founder of uh, Mitrovall uh, School, which is uh, uh, the Steiner. Uh, they um, history believe they work with. Uh, uh, Nicola Amati. Nicola Amati is the uh, famous uh, teacher of Stradivari and different uh, Andrea Guarneri or whatever. Um, the, I'm a little bit touched about the form of Brescia that's more rounder, more uh, thicker, or more fatty form. Uh, and they produce very nice, beautiful sound, strong one, enough, but not flexible. And um, the Amati school in Cremona, this founder, Andrea Amati, is 15, uh, 1550, whatever, 5, 1555, 1558. Uh, um, there's some uh, king from, Fran from France uh, ordered uh, plenty of instrument, instruments from it because it was pop popular. And uh, give the different type of form. The more tube form. If you're making the tube, for example, and that's tube, tube, yeah, cutting in half and putting on the top, you will see the tube here. That's uh, produce sound more, uh, um, how to tell, more um, flexible. But still, because that's wind here, that's more around like that, not full form. Uh, that gives that form uh, more, um, uh, not just flexibility, uh, uh, but not, not uh, because that's fat, uh, quite fat, that's not enough power. And so what did Stradivari? Stradivari and Guarneri did the uh, bad things, they making flatter forms. And the same nice, beautiful, but flatter, which is uh, more stable and more pushy sound to the whole. Now, uh, if you wish to know the difference between the uh, old style, that's violin dated 1644. 1644. That's uh, first violin coming in the uh, 1550s. Uh, that's, 16, that's 100 years after. Uh, that's, um, and this one, this violin is uh, particular showing the lower frequency. Uh, I forgot one thing, one second, sorry. Uh, the, uh, the fine tuners, don't push too much fine tuners, because you uh, are not imagine you can damage the violin underneath. Let's always keep eye on the fine tuners. Just for me, the Italian type of sound, the mixture of high and low frequency and medium frequency together, the whole spectrum of sound. Okay, now, uh, that's uh, who, uh, any question about these two violins? About the sound of low 
and high. That's, uh, what do you think about this sound? The higher frequency sound, more brighter, more brighter. Generally, a brighter sound always give um, uh, more push in the hall. That's more more coming through the hall. That's more concert quality. But this form, this form particular, like tube form, never sounding. Um, very loud. That's always very, uh, very fine, nice, beautiful sound. This could be high frequency, low frequency, but that's it. Okay. One thing: modern quality instruments. We have here that's more modern quality instruments, which is uh, Italian ones. Uh, one is modern, but three Italian. And the same thing: one instrument is um, this very bright, very nice, and people are sometimes nasal. Nasal, but in whole, uh, uh, in whole, that's particularly if you play with orchestra, that sound coming over the orchestra. If all low frequency, like this violin, you never play solo because they can't play solo because nobody hearing you. Really, this orchestra, nobody. Hear, that's good for small room, nice, beautiful, nice to hear. That's it. Uh, that. <laughs> Okay, uh, that violin made in 2009, Marika Catilani, yeah, that's a friend of mine, uh, because I'm working in Italy, I know many makers, but so I just purchased it in my studio, because I like that instrument, but that nasal instrument, maybe. Okay, play. Has, I just want to show you uh, the difference in qualities. That instrument has too much uh, high frequency. That means high frequency, good carrying sound, but not very pleasant on ear. Uh, good maker always give the more around the, the mixing with different thicknesses. One second, one second, please. Uh, it's different. <laughs> I know you, you like it to play. <laughs> but you can talk about this. It's a very, very expensive one. Okay. Um, uh, the um, Italian, uh, mostly, always when you make in the violin, the uh, uh, timber, we're always looking on uh, density of timber. Density of timber, if you're making thinner, that's give more lower frequency. Making thicker, uh, more higher frequency on violin. But this nasal violin, for the nasal or whatever, that sound with high frequency, they more timber, very dense and very uh, quite thick violin. That's brilliant. This one, that's um, uh, Virgilio Capellini, that's a violin 55 years old, that's the same like me. Um, and uh, try. But that instrument uh, uh, has that Italian quality. I try to introduce you to your Italian sound because everybody talking about the Italian sound, nobody knows what is it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I didn't too because I did a lot of research. Uh, how I said, I have 30 years, 33 years experience of violin making. Only now, probably, last 10 years, I little bit know what's going on. Yeah, that's true. Uh, particularly, we all play on violins, and and uh, just thank you for Kurt uh, to bring me here. That <laughs> help. Oh, hello. That's not just uh, my promotion too. That's I'm violin maker. I'm good violin maker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, uh, Paganini. Hmm? Please play first concerto Paganini. Different 
Thank you. <laughs> you're good. What's different you see between the two instruments? Who can tell me? No, nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> okay, I give you the best instruments. That's mine. <laughs> Of course, yes. <laughs> From this time, you know, Paganini man. <laughs> What's different? The bow frequency doesn't resonate as much. No, that's not true. Uh, that's just. Uh, <laughs> 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 that's very, 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 very tricky thing. Uh, lower frequency doesn't carry. That's not resonance. Doesn't carry enough yeah. in big hole. That's very nice on the ear, but that's my English. I know. I know. Uh, anyway, you play no, uh, you, uh, you play anything else because this violin, that's quite good violin. The maker is uh, um, uh, Rudolfo Schwarz, but that's uh, Filio de Giovanni, and that's Giovanni was uh, the history, small history. Giovanni was uh, nephew to the um, Eugenio de Gani. Eugenio de Gagne, uh, it's quite famous maker, maybe you know that uh, plenty of violins here in, in Melbourne of Eugenio de Gagne. Anyway, uh, that's quite good violin, and uh, quite valuable violin, and uh, I'm a little scared to show mine, but you can. Because it's anyway, this rosin will build, and I'm not thinking you need it to um, uh, polish it. Because I have here this very good instrument that come in to me to my uh, studio, um, and uh, they polishing the old dust, and violin looking very dirty and shiny. Uh, and that's that's a big problem, big problem because everybody wants to a little bit uh, make a nicer instrument. Better to uh, because uh, uh, me, for example, we are not using um, the any um, to clean in violin. We are not using the uh, any uh, solutions. We are using um, uh, limestones. That's like um, rotten stone. That's going you know, like pumice stone. Uh, with uh, water and soap, and we clean in the violin like that. Later we do the polish. That's that's uh, if you if you have some uh, if you don't damage the violin, uh, better to come to advice. That's free of charge. You can call me, ask me uh, anything what you like. That's uh, I always answer if I'm not in if I'm in Melbourne because I'm traveling uh, a lot to different city with uh, some lecture like that or with presentation with that all stuff and uh, between that making the violin I'm making only three four instruments per year sometimes two 
sometimes you probably are too busy or too lazy. That's <laughs> one. Uh, that's generally that's all what I. Uh, do you understand the difference in sound a little bit? Understand? Because a low frequency, remember, a low frequency or uh, darker, darker color of instruments never carry good in, in hole. That could be very lot of vibration. You're right. That could be a lot of vibration, but but that's not mean that's coming out. Uh, the bridge and sound post, how I said before, very important. Uh, generally, we accounting in French style. We are counting, which you can maximize the sound, we are counting the uh, uh, wideness of violin, wideness of F holes, and from that we are counting the position of, uh, of uh, bridge. After that, we are counting the position of sound post. That's important. Mostly uh, makers just feel, they're, they're just in mind, uh, just kill first, they're fixing the uh, bridge, after that, fixing the sound post. This has to be opposite. You have to fix in the sound post to the related to the bass bar. After that, you have to fix in the bridge. That's just not big difference, but the big difference because its wideness of bridge is different, and the straightaway effect of sound. Any question, uh, you can call me, ring me if you understand in my English here. That you will understand my English by phone. Okay. Thank you very very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very grateful to you. Any questions? Maybe see. Um, yeah, sure. Break?